Hello and uh, welcome to this short tutorial on uh, clustering, specifically k-means. Uh, so in this tutorial, we're going to use uh, data of stocks of a lot of companies and, uh, and this, data, this data set will have a lot of other attributes like company's performance, uh, uh, the stock price and etc. Uh, so let's uh, see if we can make some meaningful inferences from the clusters that are uh, returned from this algorithm. So we're going to use k-means on a stock market data set, right? Uh, so let's look into the uh, code piece for this. Yeah, so importing the usual suspects, pandas, numpy, uh, actually this is, uh, okay, uh, we're going to use uh, the k-means function from the uh, scikit-learn cluster uh, library. Let me import that. Let me read the uh, data. Uh, and give you a glimpse of what the data set looks like. So like I said, I've got different companies, sector, price of the stock, market clap, um, sorry, uh, market cap, and uh, uh, stock return percentage and a lot of other uh, useful information for clustering. And uh, so let's start or let's get into the clustering part of things. But before that, if you notice, uh, Except for stock returns, so which is not which is in percentage, uh, it, it reads correctly, right? Ninety percent, thirty-eight percent, minus eight percent. But if you notice, bad percent, uh, EBIT margin percent, they are on a scale uh, uh, from probably uh, minus one to one. So my point nine two pro uh, means actually minus ninety-two percent, whereas minus one means minus hundred percent. So let's get them all scaled back to uh, zero to hundred. I mean the. Uh, on, on that scale. So I'm just going to multiply uh, all the percentage columns except stock return with uh, 100. And then uh, for clustering purposes, we're not going to cluster the stock's uh, name or the sector, right? So uh, if I may, uh, the features of this data set are uh, the columns from price up until stock per return percentage, all these columns. So I'm just going to extract those columns uh, as just the column names here. I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, from price to stock return percentage. And then just before running k-means, it's a good idea to uh, uh, standardize our, our, uh, the uh, features. So I wouldn't say it's uh, normalize just uh, standardize using so I'm, I'm using a min max scalar here uh, so all the columns would be now uh, scaled to minus one to one i'm going to uh, use the uh, min max scalar from scikit-learn preprocessing library uh, it's pretty straightforward i will initiate a min max scalar i have to uh, fit it on the the stock data and only on the features columns if you remember these columns and then i am uh, uh, converting the it into a pandas data frame and let's look at what it looks like the uh, min value now when all the column is zero and the max value in all the columns is one so the min max is going to scale all the columns two new values between zero and one right and then uh, let's do k means so what we are telling uh, the k-means function here is that we need seven uh, clusters uh, and use all the uh, uh, CPUs in the system. I mean, uh, all, all, all the all the cores in the system to do this. And by default, it will uh, start or, or, or I mean, uh, algorithms like k-means are a little sensitive to your start values. So by default, it will try 10 different start values and give you the best result. So uh, we're asking uh, the k-means function to use all the CPUs that's, that are available to it by putting this minus one here. Uh, so now uh, we have to, we've initiated the k-means, now we have to you know, fit it into this data set and give us uh, the predicted cluster labels for each of these rows. Uh, each of these rows here so we get we, we, we get that done using the fit predict functionality 
And if you remember stock data features, scaled is a data frame with only the feature columns and that means that are scaled as well. Right, I run my k-means on them. Uh, now I have the uh, cluster labels here. I uh, port that back to our original data set. With, uh, I include a new uh, column called cluster there because it doesn't make sense to look at the scaled and uh, uh, you know uh, data frame without any stock or, or company name. So I'm, uh, I'm going to use my original data set. Uh, include a column cluster there and uh, uh, pass the cluster labels to that column. Let's look at how our clusters or how many the cluster sizes. So we have uh, the smallest cluster of size 15 and the largest cluster of size 432. Now we're done with clustering, but so this is the easiest part that, that's done. The difficult part or the more interesting part is building stories out of the clusters that you, you we've just built, uh, which probably makes uh, uh, business case or, or which which gives us uh, more actionable insights so for that one way of achieving that is uh, is to look at uh, what it uh, the cluster averages across all the features right to do that I am going to group the data set by the cluster label and look at the mean of them and again only for the you know uh, feature columns which were which were columns so then one where company name and uh, sector from column three onwards, we have the features and I'm just rounding it uh, to three decimal points. So again, uh, uh, let me just reiterate this point. What you see here is basically the average value of all the feature columns averaged by the cluster uh, to which they belong to. So the first rows, the average uh, price for all the stocks that were in cluster zero, the average market cap for all the stocks that were in cluster zero and so on and so forth. So now if you uh, look at this cluster, there was this uh, cluster four or, or uh, sorry, uh, cluster, okay, let's, let's keep calling it cluster four because we, we we're starting at cluster zero. Yeah, this is cluster four, with a very high uh, stock, stock return, like close to 40%, right? Um, hardly a, 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 a 15 stocks that performed really well. And there were this 19 stocks that performed really bad. Uh, probably we lost all the money. Uh, and uh, then there is this, uh, let's, let's, let's try to figure out something else from here. There, uh, and and uh, not very surprisingly, or pr maybe surprisingly, I don't know, uh, for the stocks that performed really bad, the price of the stocks were also on average uh, cheap. So probably, uh, probably you didn't lose a lot of money because you didn't invest a lot of money, I don't know depending on how much you put, put it in the market, right? And uh, for the stocks that gave you a lot, a lot of return, uh, that the price were, was pretty high. Uh, not the most expensive lot though, the most expensive is here, the one in those stocks here with a very, uh, 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 these were the most expensive stocks. Uh, coming back to the lot that gave us the highest return, they had the, I mean, they had a, a enormously large market, market cap. I mean, if you look at this, uh, the other uh, clusters, the, these folks, these 15 folks had a really large uh, market cap here. That's interesting. Let's look at one more guy. If uh, EBIT margin, do we have any outliers here? Uh, EBIT margin, uh, or let's look at earnings per stock eps uh, we have a problem here not a problem this is an outlier that would require some uh, investigation because if you notice the for cluster three the stock return on average was close to minus 10 you lost all the money but uh, earnings per share is like very high. I mean, in fact, the most uh, 
uh, large value in all these clusters. So if earnings per share is like very large, uh, why is the stock return percent uh, very low? I mean, in fact, negative. Uh, this requires more investigation, but primarily or uh, probably it might be because this earnings per share is high because uh, the company sold a lot of assets. Uh, it, so this, this this wasn't profit by selling their products or whatever, but they they, so, they sold a, a road of a lot of assets or they sold a lot of uh, assets which gave them money. Uh, but you wouldn't call that profit in its true sense, right? So that that might be the reason uh, EPS is quite high here, but the stock return percent is uh, very low. That requires um, that's an outlier there. That requires more interesting outlier. So you, there's no point in discarding outliers because uh, the story um, or, or true value that we get might be or is often most in the uh, outlier. And averages don't tell a story. Outliers usually have some interesting stories, right? Uh, yeah. So that's it. Um, so a couple of key takeaways. One, we have this uh, k-means uh, function from the scikit-learn cluster, which we use. Uh, for clustering in this exercise. K-means is sensitive to the start values. So if I run this again, uh, there's no guarantee that I get the same clusters, but more or less I'll get the same cluster because I'm uh, running, uh, I'm trying a couple of different start values. By default, I think it's 10. You, we, you, we, one can, you know, uh, I think it, the argument name is N star or something. With that, you can uh, tell the algorithm how many different start values you want to try. So came in is sensitive to start values and then uh, yeah uh, more than the clustering exercise itself uh, inferring clusters that's an art that requires uh, I mean that, that, that that's where the value lies. So uh, with that uh, I'm, let me close this uh, tutorial until we see again with another uh, tutorial. Uh, have a nice time.